So there are a number of different um, projects within the broad spectrum of this boundary of digital and physical uh, with a wide range of applications. So one area we do a great deal of work on is the future of fabrication, digital fabrication. Uh, digital fabrication doesn't mean what you likely think it does. In 1952, MIT connected the first computer to a milling machine. This was an offshoot of Project Whirlwind, and so you could have a model in the computer and manufacture it. Since then, there have been decades of computer-controlled tools. Uh, it was milling machines, then lasers, and wires, and water jets, and more recently, a lot of attention to additive manufacturing, where you print instead of cut. But all of that's analog, meaning there's no information in the materials themselves. You're just cutting or, or um, uh, depositing. That distinction may sound semantic, but it's the same one as communication used to be analog. Errors got worse with distance. Shannon wrote the best master's thesis ever at MIT that led to digital communication, and it showed how to communicate reliably with unreliable devices. Then computers were analog. Vannevar Bush made one of the greatest analog computers at MIT, and that was gears and pulleys, and the answers degraded with time. He showed how to digitize computing, so the devices are unreliable, but the computation is reliable. The deep research, the fundamental research we're doing on digital fabrication, isn't how to connect a computer to a tool. It's actually, you can think of it as turning the computer into the tool. We're studying how to put codes and programs into materials to actually digitize the construction process itself. Now, that's not a new idea. It's actually four billion years old. It's how proteins are made. There's a protein in your body that builds with molecular Lego called the ribosome. And in this research, in this project, what we're doing is on many different length scales, you can think of it as building with Lego, but we're making molecular Lego to build proteins and we're making micro Lego to build electronics, and we're making giant, you can think of it as Lego, that makes jumbo jets. But in each case, the materials themselves are made out of codes in their construction. And the properties are profoundly different. Um, uh, if you think about, say, a, a 3D printer, it makes a piece of plastic and the errors accumulate, and it's made out of one piece of plastic, and when you're done, you put it in the trash. Um, the kind of discrete assemblers we're building, um, the geometry comes from the parts, not the machine, so you're not limited in size. The parts themselves reduce errors, so what you make is more accurate than the thing that makes it. You can make them out of dissimilar materials, and it's reversible, you can unbuild as well as build. And so, in each of these length scales, what's emerging is this entirely new way to digitize fabrication, and so what it leads to technically is the Star Trek replicator. It's how to make something that makes anything pretty explicitly as a research roadmap, and then along the way there's a very wide range of applications.